There seems to be a lot of people who don't understand that a word can have more than one meaning. They seem a bit confused about prefixes in the English language, too. The etymology of a word matters very little. In fact, the only way it really matters is with prefixes. Words that are from foreign languages, especially from Greek and Latin, use the neoclassical prefix definitions. Native words have a different set of prefix definitions, although they are quite similar. The word atheist definitely uses the neoclassical prefixes based on its origin, as well as its usage in a more technical sense. This is one of those words that can also fit in with the native category. Its meaning in the more typical conversational usage indicates this is so. So, the prefix can mean not or without when used in one context, and mean lack of when used in a different context. Words also have associations that go along with them. However, these are just implied and not part of the definition. The word agnostic is frequently assumed to be mutually exclusive with the word atheist. This is not the case, though. The word gnostic pertains to absolute knowledge, so agnostic is without knowledge. So a person can have a position on both spectrums. For example, most self-identified atheists would be agnostic atheists because they do not believe in gods or in absolute knowledge. Self-identified agnostics are frequently similar, but may feel very apathetic about the topic. This also illustrates how the more technical definition may vary from the more typical or common definition. The most precise and pedantic definition of a word which is valid in that contextual usage wouldn't be correct in more colloquial context and vice versa. The word atheist usually means a lack of belief in gods. That probably covers 99% of the usage and is probably a safe assumption. However, it can also be defined as disbelief in God in the case of Gnostic or strong atheists. At its most technical, it simply means not a theist. That can include Buddhists, but conversationally we would not refer to them as atheists despite the fact that it is technically true. Babies do have beliefs they see patterns from day one, that is just how the human mind is. However, the mental development needed to conceptualize another mind is beyond their capabilities. Therefore, they cannot yet have a belief in any God concept. So, they are technically atheists. Conversationally, this is pedantic and silly, despite it being technically true. We don't talk about a lack of belief that someone wouldn't be capable of conceptualizing in the first place. People always want to know what this implication means. Quite simply, it means absolutely nothing. The entire purpose of saying a baby is an atheist is to point out the technical definition of the word atheist in a controversial way. That also has no intrinsic purpose in and of itself. It is simply the nail in the coffin of all bullshit arguments which seek to tack implied associations onto a definition. The word atheist says nothing other than one's lack of belief in gods. All other baggage is merely an association and not part of the definition. Theists may want to add the Gnostic modifier to create a straw man argument against an agnostic atheist. Some atheists may assume that it means they are more rational, intelligent, knowledgeable, etc. This may be true in many cases, but not all. I've met plenty of atheists, especially in more recent days, who are rational only on the subject of God and nothing else. Plenty of them have little knowledge and may be as dumb as a box of rocks. I'm sure you have encountered them. They may have someone they fanatically follow. They tend to be obnoxious, bellicose, especially in regard to someone that they follow. 
Go to any big atheist channel and you will find at least a few such people. Things like rationalism, skepticism, and empiricism are better descriptions of what someone like me thinks. The word atheist just describes my position on the concept of gods. Agnostic atheist, to be more precise. That is just one of many things, though. It may be an important one in our society, however, it is not the be-all and end-all of rationality. Frequently, it is one of the first major milestones on that journey, though.